The Geography of Mexico describes the geographic features of Mexico, a country in the Americas. Mexico is located at about 23 degrees north and 102 degrees west in the southern portion of North America. From its farthest land points, Mexico is a little over 3,200 kilometers 2, miles in length. Mexico is bounded to the north by the United States specifically, from west to east, by California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, to the west and south by the Pacific Ocean, to the east by the Gulf of Mexico, and to the southeast by Belize, Guatemala, and the Caribbean Sea. The northernmost constituent of Latin America, it is the most populous Spanish-speaking country in the world. Mexico is the world's 13th largest country, three times the size of Texas. Almost all of Mexico is on the North American plate, with small parts of the Baja California Peninsula in the northwest on the Pacific and Cocos plates. Some geographers include the portion east of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec including the Yucatan Peninsula within North America. This portion includes Campeche, Chiapas, Tabasco, Quintana Roo, and Yucatán, representing 12.1% of the country's total area. Alternatively, the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt may be said to delimit the region physiographically on the north. Geopolitically, Mexico is generally not considered part of Central America. Politically, Mexico is divided into 31 states and a federal district, which serves as the national capital. As well as numerous neighboring islands, Mexican territory includes the more remote Isla Guadalupe and the Isla Revillagigedo in the Pacific. Mexico's total area covers 1,972,550 square kilometers, including approximately 6,000 square kilometers of islands in the Pacific Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, and Gulf of California. On its north, Mexico shares a 5,000-kilometer border with the United States. The meandering Rio Bravo del Norte known as the Rio Grande in the United States defines the border from Ciudad Juarez east to the Gulf of Mexico. A series of natural and artificial markers delineate the United States-Mexican border west from Ciudad Juarez to the Pacific Ocean. The Mexico-U.S. boundary is jointly administered by the International Boundary and Water Commission. On its south, Mexico shares an 871-kilometer border with Guatemala and a 251-kilometer border with Belize. Mexico has a 9,330-kilometer coastline, of which 7,338 kilometers face the Pacific Ocean and the Gulf of California, and the remaining 2,805 kilometers front the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. Mexico's Exclusive Economic Zone EEZ, which extends 200 nautical miles 370 kilometers off each coast, covers approximately 2.7 million square kilometers. The landmass of Mexico dramatically narrows as it moves in a southeasterly direction from the United States border and then abruptly curves northward before ending in the 500-kilometer-long Yucatan Peninsula. Indeed, the state capital of Yucatán, Mérida, is farther north than Mexico City or Guadalajara. Topic: <laughs> Physical features. Beginning approximately 50 kilometers (31 miles) from the United States border, the Sierra Madre Occidental mountain range extends about 1,250 kilometers (780 miles) south to the Rio Santiago, where it merges with the Cordillera Neovolcanica range that runs east-west across central Mexico. The Sierra Madre Occidental lies approximately 300 kilometers (190 miles) inland from the west coast of Mexico at its northern end, but approaches to within 50 kilometers of the coast near the Cordillera Neovolcanica. The northwest coastal plain is the name given the lowland area between the Sierra Madre Occidental and the Gulf of California. The Sierra Madre Occidental averages 2,250 meters (7,380 feet) in elevation, with peaks reaching 3,000 meters (9,800 feet). The Sierra Madre Oriental mountain range starts at the Big Bend region of the border with the U.S. state of Texas and continues 1,350 kilometers (840 miles) until reaching Cofer de Pirot, one of the major peaks of the Cordillera Neovolcanica. 
As is the case with the Sierra Madre Occidental, the Sierra Madre Oriental comes progressively closer to the coastline as it approaches its southern terminus, reaching to within 75 kilometers 47 miles of the Gulf of Mexico. The northeast coastal plain extends from the eastern slope of the Sierra Madre Oriental to the Gulf of Mexico. The median elevation of the Sierra Madre Oriental is 2,200 meters (7,200 feet), with some peaks at 3,000 meters (9,800 feet). The Mexican Altiplano, stretching from the United States border to the Cordillera Neovolcanica, occupies the vast expanse of land between the eastern and western Sierra Madres. A low east-west range divides the Altiplano into northern and southern sections. These two sections, previously called the Mesa del Norte and Mesa Central, are now regarded by geographers as sections of one altiplano. The northern altiplano averages 1,100 meters in elevation and continues south from the Rio Bravo del Norte through the states of Zacatecas and San Luis Potosi. Various narrow, isolated ridges cross the plateaus of the northern altiplano. Numerous depressions dot the region, the largest of which is the Bolson de Mapimi. The southern Altiplano is higher than its northern counterpart, averaging 2,000 meters 6, feet in elevation. The southern Altiplano contains numerous valleys originally formed by ancient lakes. Several of Mexico's most prominent cities, including Mexico City and Guadalajara, are located in the valleys of the southern Altiplano. One other significant mountain range, the Peninsular Ranges, cuts across the landscape of the northern half of Mexico. A southern extension of the California coastal ranges that parallel California's coast, the Mexican portion of the peninsular ranges extends from the United States border to the southern tip of the Baja California Peninsula, a distance of 1,430 kilometers 890 miles. Peaks in the California system range in altitude from 2,200 meters 7,200 feet in the north to only 250 meters 820 feet near La Paz in the south. Narrow lowlands are found on the Pacific Ocean and the Gulf of California sides of the mountains. The Cordillera Neovolcanica is a belt 900 kilometers (560 miles) long and 130 kilometers (81 miles) wide, extending from the Pacific Ocean to the Gulf of Mexico. The Cordillera Neovolcanica begins at the Rio Grande de Santiago and continues south to Colima, where it turns east along the 19th parallel to the central portion of the state of Veracruz. The region is distinguished by considerable seismic activity and contains Mexico's highest volcanic peaks. This range contains three peaks exceeding 5,000 meters 16,000 feet, Pico de Orizaba Sitlaltepetl, the third highest mountain in North America, and Popocatépetl and Iztachihuatl near Mexico City. The Cordillera Neovolcanica is regarded as the geological dividing line between North America and Central America. Several important mountain ranges dominate the landscape of southern and southeastern Mexico. The Sierra Madre del Sur extends 1,200 kilometers along Mexico's southern coast from the southwestern part of the Cordillera Neovolcanica to the nearly flat isthmus of Tehuantepec. Mountains in this range average 2,000 meters in elevation. The range averages 100 kilometers wide, but widens to 150 kilometers in the state of Oaxaca. The narrow southwest coastal plain extends from the Sierra Madre del Sur to the Pacific Ocean. The Sierra Madre de Oaxaca begins at Pico de Orizaba and extends in a southeasterly direction for 300 kilometers until reaching the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. Peaks in the Sierra Madre de Oaxaca average 2,500 meters in elevation, with some peaks exceeding 3,000 meters. South of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, the Sierra Madre de Chiapas runs 280 kilometers along the Pacific coast from the Oaxaca-Chiapas border to Mexico's border with Guatemala. Although average elevation is only 1,500 meters, one peak, Vulcan de Tacuma, exceeds 4,000 meters in elevation. Finally, the Meseta Central de Chiapas extends 250 kilometers through the central part of Chiapas to Guatemala. The average height of peaks of the Meseta Central de Chiapas is 2,000 meters. The Chiapas Central Valley separates the Meseta Central de Chiapas and the Sierra Madre de Chiapas. 
Mexico has nearly 150 rivers, two-thirds of which empty into the Pacific Ocean and the remainder of which flow into the Gulf of Mexico or the Caribbean Sea. Despite this apparent abundance of water, water volume is unevenly distributed throughout the country. Indeed, five rivers, the Usumacinda, Grijalva, Papaloapan, Coatzacoalcos, and Panuco, account for 52% of Mexico's average annual volume of surface water. All five rivers flow into the Gulf of Mexico, only the Rio Panuco is outside southeastern Mexico, which contains approximately 15% of national territory and 12% of the national population. In contrast, northern and central Mexico, with 47% of the national area and almost 60% of Mexico's population, have less than 10% of the country's water resources. Topic. Seismic activity Situated atop three of the large tectonic plates that constitute the Earth's surface, Mexico is one of the most seismologically active regions on Earth. The motion of these plates causes earthquakes and volcanic activity. Most of the Mexican landmass rests on the westward-moving North American plate. The Pacific Ocean floor off southern Mexico, however, is being carried northeast by the underlying motion of the Cocos Plate. Ocean floor material is relatively dense. When it strikes the lighter granite of the Mexican landmass, the ocean floor is forced under the landmass, creating the deep Middle America Trench that lies off Mexico's southern coast. The westward moving land atop the North American Plate is slowed and crumpled where it meets the Cocos Plate, creating the mountain ranges of southern Mexico. The subduction of the Cocos Plate accounts for the frequency of earthquakes near Mexico's southern coast. As the rocks constituting the ocean floor are forced down, they melt, and the molten material is forced up through weaknesses in the surface rock, creating the volcanoes in the Cordillera Neovolcanica across central Mexico. Areas of Mexico's coastline on the Gulf of California, including the Baja California Peninsula, are riding northwestward on the Pacific Plate. Rather than one plate subducting, the Pacific and North American plates grind past each other, creating a slip fault that is the southern extension of the San Andreas Fault in California. Motion along this fault in the past pulled Baja California away from the coast, creating the Gulf of California. Continued motion along this fault is the source of earthquakes in western Mexico. Mexico has a long history of destructive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. In September 1985, an earthquake measuring 8.0 on the moment magnitude scale and centered in the subduction zone off Acapulco killed more than 4,000 people in Mexico City, more than 300 kilometers away. Vulcan de Colima, south of Guadalajara, erupted in 1994, and El Chichon, in southern Mexico, underwent a violent eruption in 1983. Paracutan in northwest Mexico began as puffs of smoke in a cornfield in 1943, a decade later the volcano was 424 meters high. Although dormant for decades, Popocatépetl and Iztaccíhuatl, smoking warrior, and white lady, respectively, in Nahuatl, occasionally send out puffs of smoke clearly visible in Mexico City, a reminder to the capital's inhabitants that volcanic activity is near. Popocatépetl showed renewed activity in 1995 and 1996, forcing the evacuation of several nearby villages and causing concern by seismologists and government officials about the effect that a large-scale eruption might have on the heavily populated region nearby. Topic. Climate The Tropic of Cancer effectively divides the country into temperate and tropical zones. Land north of the 24th parallel experiences cooler temperatures during the winter months. South of the 24th parallel, temperatures are fairly constant year-round and vary solely as a function of elevation. Areas south of the 20th 4th parallel with elevations up to 1,000 meters 3,281 feet the southern parts of both coastal plains as well as the Yucatan Peninsula, have a yearly median temperature between 24 and 28 degrees Celsius 75.2 and 82.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures here remain high throughout the year, with only a 5 degrees Celsius 9 degrees Fahrenheit difference between winter and summer median temperatures. 
Although low-lying areas north of the 20th fourth parallel are hot and humid during the summer, they generally have lower yearly temperature averages from 20 to 24 degrees Celsius or 68.0 to 75.2 degrees Fahrenheit because of more moderate conditions during the winter. Between 1,000 and 2,000 meters 3,281 and 6,562 feet, one encounters yearly average temperatures between 16 and 20 degrees Celsius 60.8 and 68.0 degrees Fahrenheit. Towns and cities at this elevation south of the 24th parallel have relatively constant, pleasant temperatures throughout the year, whereas more northerly locations experience sizable seasonal variations. Above 2,000 meters 6 feet, temperatures drop as low as an average yearly range between 8 and 12 degrees Celsius .4 and .6 degrees Fahrenheit in the Cordillera Neovolcanica. At 2,300 meters 7 feet, Mexico City has a yearly median temperature of 15 degrees Celsius 59 degrees Fahrenheit with pleasant summers and mild winters. Average daily highs and lows for May, the warmest month, are 26 and 12 degrees Celsius 78.8 and 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and average daily highs and lows for January, the coldest month, are 19 and 6 degrees Celsius 66.2 and 42.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Rainfall varies widely both by location and season. Arid or semi-arid conditions are encountered in the Baja California Peninsula, the northwestern state of Sonora, the northern Altiplano, and also significant portions of the southern Altiplano. Rainfall in these regions averages between 300 and 600 mm .8 and .6 in per year, although even less in some areas, particularly in the state of Baja California. Average rainfall totals are between 600 and 1,000 mm .6 and .4 in, in most of the major populated areas of the southern Altiplano, including Mexico City and Guadalajara. Low-lying areas along the Gulf of Mexico receive in excess of 1,000 mm .4 in of rainfall in an average year, with the wettest region being the southeastern state of Tabasco, which typically receives approximately 2,000 mm .7 in of rainfall on an annual basis. Parts of the northern Altiplano, highlands and high peaks in the Sierra Madres receive yearly snowfall. Sitlaltepetl, Popocatépetl and Iztachihuatl continue to support glaciers, the largest of which is the Gran Glaciar Norte. Mexico has pronounced wet and dry seasons. Most of the country experiences a rainy season from June to mid-October and significantly less rain during the remainder of the year. February and July generally are the driest and wettest months, respectively. Mexico City, for example, receives an average of only 5 mm of rain during February but more than 160 mm in, in July. Coastal areas, especially those along the Gulf of Mexico, experience the largest amounts of rain in September. Tabasco typically records more than 300 mm in, of rain during that month. A small coastal area of northwestern coastal Mexico around Tijuana has a Mediterranean climate with considerable coastal fog and a rainy season that occurs in winter. Mexico lies squarely within the hurricane belt, and all regions of both coasts are susceptible to these storms from June through November. Hurricanes on the Pacific coast are often less violent than those affecting Mexico's eastern coastline. Several hurricanes per year strike the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico coastline, however, and these storms bring high winds, heavy rain, extensive damage, and occasional loss of life. Hurricane Gilbert passed directly over Cancun in September 1988, with winds in excess of 200 km per hour 124 miles per hour, producing major damage to hotels in the resort area. It then struck northeast Mexico, where flooding from the heavy rain killed dozens in the Monterey area and caused extensive damage to livestock and vegetable crops. <inaudible> <inaudible> environmental conditions Mexico faces significant environmental challenges damaging nearly all sections of the country. Vast expanses of southern and southeastern tropical forests have been denuded for cattle raising and agriculture. 
For example, tropical forests covered almost half of the state of Tabasco in 1940 but less than 10% by the late 1980s. During the same period, pastureland increased from 20 to 60% of the state's total area. Analysts reported similar conditions in other tropical sections of Mexico. Deforestation and desertification has contributed to serious levels of soil erosion nationwide. In 1985 the government classified almost 17% of all land as totally eroded, 31% in an accelerated state of erosion, and 38% demonstrating signs of incipient erosion. Mexico has developed a biodiversity action plan to address issues of endangered species and habitats that merit protection. Soil destruction is particularly pronounced in the north and northwest, with more than 60% of land considered in a total or accelerated state of erosion. Fragile because of its semi-arid and arid character, the soil of the region has become increasingly damaged through excessive cattle raising and irrigation with waters containing high levels of salinity. The result is a mounting problem of desertification throughout the region. Mexico's vast coastline faces a different, but no less difficult, series of environmental problems. For example, inadequately regulated petroleum exploitation in the Coatzacoalcos Minatitlan zone in the Gulf of Mexico has caused serious damage to the waters and fisheries of Rio Coatzacoalcos. The deadly explosion that racked a working class neighborhood in Guadalajara in April 1992 serves as an appropriate symbol of environmental damage in Mexico. More than 1,000 barrels 160 cubic meters of gasoline seeped from a corroded Mexican petroleum Petróleos Mexicanos Pemex pipeline into the municipal sewer system, where it combined with gases and industrial residuals to produce a massive explosion that killed 190 persons and injured nearly 1,500 others. Mexico City confronts authorities with perhaps their most daunting environmental challenge. Geography and extreme population levels have combined to produce one of the world's most polluted urban areas. Mexico City sits in a valley surrounded on three sides by mountains, which serve to trap contaminants produced by the metropolitan area's 15 million residents. One government study in the late 1980s determined that nearly 5 million tons of contaminants were emitted annually in the atmosphere, a tenfold increase over the previous decade. Carbons and hydrocarbons from the region's more than 3 million vehicles account for approximately 80% of these contaminants, with another 15%, primarily of sulfur and nitrogen, coming from industrial plants. The resulting dangerous mix is responsible for a wide range of respiratory illnesses. One study of 12 urban areas worldwide in the mid-1980s concluded that the residents of Mexico City had the highest levels of lead and cadmium in their blood. The volume of pollutants from Mexico City has damaged the surrounding ecosystem as well. For example, wastewater from Mexico City that flows north and is used for irrigation in the state of Hidalgo has been linked to congenital birth defects and high levels of gastrointestinal diseases in that state. Beginning in the mid-1980s, the government enacted numerous anti-pollution policies in Mexico City with varied degrees of success. Measures such as vehicle emissions inspections, the introduction of unleaded gasoline, and the installation of catalytic converters on new vehicles helped reduce pollution generated by trucks and buses. In contrast, one of the government's most prominent actions, the No Driving Day program, may have inadvertently contributed to higher pollution levels. Under the program, metropolitan area residents were prohibited from driving their vehicles one day each work week based on the last number of their license plate. However, those with the resources to do so purchased additional automobiles to use on the day their principal vehicle was prohibited from driving, thus adding to the region's vehicle stock. Thermal inversions reached such dangerous levels at various times in the mid-1990s that the government declared pollution emergencies, necessitating sharp temporary cutbacks in vehicle use and industrial production. Topic. General indicators Climate – varies from tropical to desert. Terrain – high, rugged mountains, low coastal plains, high plateaus, desert. Elevation extremes Lowest point – Laguna Salada – minus 10 meters 
Highest point, Pico de Orizaba Volcano 5700 m Natural Resources, Petroleum, Silver, Copper, Gold, Lead, Zinc, Natural Gas and Timber. Land Use Arable Land, 12.98% Permanent Crops, 1.36% other, 85.66% 2011 Irrigated land, 64,600 square kilometers 2009 Total renewable water resources, 457.2 cubic kilometers Natural hazards, tsunamis and tropical cyclones along the Pacific coast, volcanoes and destructive earthquakes in the center and south, and hurricanes on the Gulf of Mexico and Caribbean coasts. Volcanism, volcanic activity in the central southern part of the country, the volcanoes in Baja California are mostly dormant, Colima ELEV. 3850 meters, which erupted in 2010, is Mexico's most active volcano and is responsible for causing periodic evacuations of nearby villagers, it has been deemed a decade volcano. By the International Association of Volcanology and Chemistry of the Earth's Interior, worthy of study due to its explosive history and close proximity to human populations, Popocatapetl ELEV. 5,426 meters poses a threat to Mexico City. Other historically active volcanoes include Barcina, Saboruco, El Chichon, Michoacán Guanajuato, Pico de Orizaba, San Martín, Socorro, and Tacana. Environment, current issues, natural fresh water resources scarce and polluted in north, inaccessible and poor quality in center and extreme southeast, raw sewage and industrial effluents polluting rivers in urban areas, deforestation, widespread erosion, desertification, serious air pollution in the national capital and urban centers along the U.S.-Mexico border, land subsidence in Valley of Mexico caused by groundwater depletion. Environment, international agreements, party to, biodiversity, climate change, climate change Kyoto Protocol, desertification, endangered species, hazardous wastes, law of the sea, marine dumping, marine life conservation, ozone layer protection, ship pollution, wetlands, whaling. See also 4,000 meter peaks of Mexico Geology of North America List of ultras of Mexico Mountain peaks of Mexico